Okay, so we're recording, so you can get started whenever you like. Okay. So um, thanks for viewing our webinar on the Chinese language program at the Auckland University. My name is Janine and I'm here with Dr. Karen Huang, um, who teaches Chinese language at Auckland University. Um, so I guess we will be taking questions at the end. Um, I'll bring that up again, I guess. Um, but Karen, would you like to start by telling us a little bit about what it's like to study Chinese at the University of Auckland? Uh, hi. <laughs> uh, what is it like to study Chinese? Yeah, so well, like, what there are the so, classes like? Okay, so we basically, we do both uh, language and cultures. So we have a uh, focus that um, on language courses. So can uh, go all the way from stage one to stage three. And there's also elective on advanced reading and writing. So that's our language stream. And then there's also uh, content courses. And these courses are um, topic on Chinese studies. So Chinese culture, societies, um, politics and on different topics. So uh, history, so you have a better understanding. And these courses are taught in English but it gives you the background and it gives you a deeper understanding um, about um, China and Chinese speaking societies. Okay, so do students pick one of those streams or do they take both the language and the culture courses? So you have uh, different options, so it depends. If you want to major, then we want to train you have a very uh, very solid uh, background in all aspects. So you can go out and say I'm majoring in Chinese and I, you know all these uh, important things. So in that case, you are required to do both content and the language courses. Mm -hmm. um, and so we ask you to reach the language level um, um, to at least uh, the second, second paper in the stage three. So say a student who has already studied in high school, they could uh, maybe get placed in stage two. So they just take a couple papers um, and then they just have to complete the Chinese studies part. Hmm. But for students who have uh, no background, they will have to start from the beginning and then still reach the same uh, language proficiency. Mm -hmm. And then so for students who, there are also other students who doesn't want to major in Chinese. They don't want to do BA. Um, they just, they're just they doing other degrees, but they would like to polish their Chinese language skill. In that case, uh, they could also take Chinese with other uh, means. So we have a different uh, certificate or different program that you can try to incorporate Chinese language courses um, in your degree. Okay, yeah. Did you want to pull up your slides about the different Awesome. Yeah, yeah, I think that will be clear. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so uh, let me share screen. And hopefully, yep, do that again. <laughs> okay, so uh, here are the degree options uh, to study Chinese. So you can major in Chinese, as I mentioned earlier, when you major in Chinese, you basically have to take both language courses and the content courses. I'll come back to that. Um, and or if you just want to study language, you could do these options. So when you major, <clears throat> there are two options. One is doing a BA. So we just have a BA uh, renewal. So we uh, restructure our Bachelor of Arts program. And so if you want to do a BA, you uh, have to double major. So in that case, you choose Chinese with something else. So a very a lot of people do both say Chinese and psychology or Chinese and sociology or Chinese and political science. It was a very common one. So if you want to uh, do a BA, then you pick Chinese in one other degree, uh, subject. Um, you can also do ch major in Chinese in the uh, conjoint program. So very common, we get BA, BCom, so Bachelor of Arts with Bachelor of, of uh, Commerce. We have a lot of students from there. If you're doing a conjoint, the arts side, you can just choose one subject. So you get try Chinese with say, I don't know, emphasis or something. Uh, another very common combination is BA with law. 
So we get a lot of students because apparently in the field of law, like language abilities are very important. So we also get a lot of students from uh, this combination. Um, if you don't want to major in Chinese, you just want to take Chinese as a subject, Chinese language as a subject, you can either do a certificate in languages or a diploma in languages. Um, uh, if you are say other in other faculty, or you can do that if you're in BA as well. So what these degrees are, they added to your existing degree. So for a certificate of language, um, that is extra four papers. So say if you're doing Bachelor of Science, that's three years. So, but if you add it, say, I wanna do certificate in languages together with my uh, BSci, in that case, you might graduate in three and a half years. Uh, or you can do a diploma in language, which is extra eight paper, and that's a one year program. So you, uh, you put them, you, basically finish with a bachelor degree and a diploma in language in four years. Hmm. Um, you can also do it as a module. So this is only available if you are doing a BA degree. So uh, what's great about BA, the BA degree is that you have a lot of flexibility to uh, take other courses that's outside your two majors. So say if someone do history and anthropology and they still have space, um, they can choose three papers in the Chinese language and then call that, uh, So, and that's the module in Chinese language. So it will show up in your degree. So people know that, oh, uh, you're elective, you have a focus on the Chinese language. Um, there's also a fairly new degree, which is Bachelor of Global Studies. And for this degree, uh, every student needs to do at least four papers in um, a language. So you can, if you choose Asia fo Asian focus, and you can choose between Chinese, Japanese, and Korean. And then if, uh, so you can take Chinese under the Bachelor of Global Studies. So you have a space for that. Um, you could also, some degree, but other than that, other degree, usually the elective is not that much. Like the space is not so flexible. That's what, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So, so lots of uh, different options there for studying yes. Chinese. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so students who have already, or what are the prerequisites for studying Chinese at the University of Auckland? Or are there any options for students who maybe haven't been studying Chinese in high school? Yes, definitely. So we, uh, we take students who have never studied Chinese, no background at all. You can start from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we started with the basic pinyin in the first stage one courses. So yeah, definitely we welcome. Uh, and we understand many high school doesn't offer Chinese in their um, school so mm -hmm. yeah so definitely and then for students who have been studying Chinese up to like year 12 or year 13 does that um, get them an, a little extra edge for when they start their course so uh, usually what happens is in the beginning of the semester before you enroll uh, we will do placement test so we because uh, every school they have different curriculum and then some student might went for their OE and forgot. <laughs> so it's more accurate to say like we will do a test and see where you at. Um, so um, if you have studied more than I would say NCEA one, you will probably start from the still the beginner, but two upward and then we will do a placement test and it really depends. Um, some um, most likely student get into maybe the second paper for first year or the first paper in the second year, but we also get student who get placed in the third year as well. Oh wow! So, yeah, so it really depends. Cool. Um, so when students are choosing a university course, often they are thinking in the future, what can they do with that degree? Um, do you have any career ideas for students who are studying Chinese? So uh, 
if it's very direct Chinese Chinese,、mm. uh, we actually have a couple of students who are currently teaching. So what they did is they、uh, teaching Chinese in high school and middle school.、Mm-hmm. So、uh, they did the major Chinese with something else, and then they、uh, get a I think it's a graduate diploma, so they can become a teacher. And then they go on and teach Chinese, which is、right. amazing. Yeah,、uh, and also we get a lot of students. I think they they really think of it as a great opportunity to prepare themselves to work abroad. So we get a lot of students who is not in New Zealand anymore. <laughs> So they they went on to China. They、uh, work in Shanghai, and then、um, and many of them even it doesn't have to be China. Even in、um, many international cities, they will want to hire someone with a Chinese background. We also have a couple successful graduate who's currently work in、um, Wellington. So I think one in the. MBI and one I don't remember which ministry, but they basically advise the government, tell them what,、uh, not tell them, but like help them to develop how we should、um, develop the future because China、mm-hmm. is such an important trading partner with New Zealand,、mm-hmm. so, and also、uh, I mean pre-COVID era is also a major tourism.、Uh, or, Our、um, export, right? So,、mm-hmm. um, so a lot of job opportunities and ask for people with、um, Chinese knowledge and the Chinese、uh, language background.、Um, what else we have?、Mm. Also, a lot of people in law, like they work on the law firms, and and they they require because、uh, we have such a strong Asian、uh, Chinese community. And then、mm-hmm. um, the linguistic ability is really required for those、um, to have to in order to communicate with the clients and understand the cultural that is uh, behind uh, people's behavior. Right. So、mm-hmm. yeah. So that's a very important part as well. Yeah, and like you said,、um, China is such a big market. Like I can imagine that there's a lot of crossover for people who have studied business. And also Chinese,、um, as well. Yeah.、Um, mm-hmm. um, did you want to tell us a little bit about the research topics that you are working on right now, or any research that, like your colleagues, are doing that might be interesting?、Um, so I am actually a linguist. <laughs> so I work on.、Uh, so I'm a Chinese、uh, linguist. So I work on. On the linguistic aspect of a language, so、uh, my major study is on the acoustic properties of、uh, tones. So I'm interested in the tones and the,、um, how people talk, how people from different area talks.、Mm-hmm. Um, I'm also we also have a very strong、um, Chinese language pedagogy. So、um, I work on some of it, like for example, the heritage language learning.、Uh, my colleague、uh, Dan Ping Wang. Uh, she works on the、um, the translanguaging in classroom. So, and she just recently got awarded a Marston、um, a grant. Yeah,、oh, wow. to work on the yeah to work on that. So, and then we have a lot of interest from China. All the teachers,、uh, all the st-、um, student wants to do research in Chinese language education and trying to come here. So, which make us to have a really strong. Uh, program because all these、uh, postgraduate students they also become asset when we teach our students.、Mm. Yeah,、right. in terms of the con, so that's the language side. Me and my colleague、uh, Danny Danping, and、um, in terms of the cultural side, we have、uh, Professor Paul Clark. He also got Marston Grant. I don't know how many times. <laughs> <laughs> he's、uh, he's interested in. He's interested in, in the Chinese film, Chinese culture, and he's he's done so many studies in、uh, Beijing. He just always go there for field trip t- to understand、uh, the culture, the youth. I think recently he worked on the youth culture in Beijing. 
Uh, oh. So he teaches like really interesting courses. I, I often joke that he's more Chinese than me. Right? <laughs> yeah, he speaks like a, a Beijing accent. <laughs> That's like perfect. Yeah. Uh, and then we have uh, Dr. Melissa Inoy. She uh, works on Chinese history, and she is just a fabulous teacher. So, so her research was uh, basically, I think, is. I'm not sure, maybe 18th century, <laughs> um, China, the Josh, oh boy, I shouldn't talk about other people's research. <laughs> whatever. So it's talking about the religions, the, the missionaries in China. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then she, um, so her, so basically it's talk about the foreigners in China around that time when China mm -hmm. was still very close. Um, so yeah, and she is just a fabulous teacher that uh, she has won teaching awards and yeah, and students are all very excited about uh, learning from her, like her classroom is very active. Um, we also have Dr. Stephen Noakes and he's, uh, he's actually currently in political science, but then we, uh, his Chinese policy courses is also part of our program. Yeah, so uh, he his research is actually quite interesting. It's quite sensitive. It's uh, it's on Falun Gong. It's um, but basically he's interested in of interested in the organization in China, and he uh, um um he is he knows a lot of stuff about and always get us the most recent update of the current situation mm -hmm. and um, provide important insight for us. So he's a treasure as well. Yeah. So wow. we have a very strong team um, in terms of, because we really aim to give students a very, um, it's a coherent, a very complete experience of really understand not just language, but also um, um, everything behind it as well. Yeah, that sounds like a really well-rounded um, area of study and lots of different ways to explore it. Um, I, I noticed that you mentioned um, some students will do study abroad or they'll study Chinese as a way to eventually move abroad. Did you want to talk a little bit about the study abroad options for students? I know right now um, we're probably <laughs> not running those, but like in, <laughs> in a couple of years, hopefully we'll yeah. get some back. Yeah. yeah. So, so we had uh, we have a very um, successful study abroad program. So uh, the last two years pre COVID. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm still sharing screen, so I can show you um, this page. So the last uh, two years, we went to Taiwan, uh, Tainan, the National Chengkong University. So it's a four week intensive program, um, wow. usually in December. So what happens is you go there for four weeks and then you get, uh, you get credits in for your um, in Auckland uni studies. So you get 15 points. So you do 70, you do the study there and then come back would give you an assessment and then you get a, just like you complete the course. Mm -hmm. But then um, they really tailor made um, and create a program that is a, a really look at our needs. And so it's not just, it's not just the intensive language program. They also included a lot of cultural aspect and they organize uh, study buddies. So the study buddies will often <laughs> like take you, they would meet regularly and then they would take them explore the city. And then um, it's really, students were really uh, rave about the experience. And they, and then really there is no better way than uh, immerse in the uh, environment and study the language. So um, yeah, this is really great. And also because Chinese is such a important target language for the <laughs> in terms from mm -hmm. government's point of view so yeah. there are also a lot of scholarships available uh, for students to go so this is a, just an example of a study abroad tour that we run so like students join together and I think students also enjoy this sort of group experience but uh, definitely a lot of students just find a way to 
Asia and then just to <laughs> polish their skills. And there are many different ways to fund them. So we also have a lot of students just decide I want to do a three month internship in say Shanghai. And mm -hmm. then they found something online and they apply for the prime minister's scholarship because those internships sometimes can be quite pricey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then the, the scholarship fund them to go. And so there are just so many opportunities because the government really want students to go. They want them to uh, develop this ability and learn um, the culture and then um, so they can come back and help New Zealand to mm. uh, create a better relationship with Asia. So this is really a, a area of focus. Um, also, there's um, so because of that, there is other institute, for example, the Centers of Asian Pacific El Excellence. Mm -hmm. So the North Asia, we, we call this CAPE. The North Asia CAPE is actually housed in the University of Auckland. So they also organize a lot of internship, a lot of uh, activities that is um, to enhance the understanding of um, Asia and China as well. So um, yeah, and then we also have our internal um, scholarship, for example, uh, undergrad scholarship or study abroad scholarship to encourage students to really go Mm -hmm. study yeah so what we really want to do is to develop this confidence for students to after so after they graduate they they can go uh, we have students who complete the ma degree in china in the beijing university wow. in uh, fudan university they went there and then get a master degree and come back so we just really want them to have this confidence to not just live there but also pursue their career and the future uh, mm -hmm. abroad yeah mm -hmm. awesome um so we do have a little bit of time for questions. So if anybody who's watching has questions for us, if you want to pop those into our chat, um, we will we can answer those right now if anybody has questions. Um, if not, um, or as we're if we're waiting for questions to come in, I don't know if you had anything else you wanted to add, Dr. Karen. Um. We're drawing kind of to the close, but we have, time. We have you know, five minutes for questions. Yeah. I guess we can talk about a uh, kind of approach in terms of our language teaching. Yeah. Yeah. For yeah. Sure. So, um, so we just had a major curriculum change. So we, um, right now we adopt this um, very popular series of textbook integrated Chinese from that's used by half of the university in the United States. So sort of more aligned to the international uh, curriculum. Mm -hmm. So we also take a more, um, more communicative approach that we hope students can feel comfortable uh, to be able to talk and function with the language. Um, also, because of that, so our classroom our assignment style is more, um, we do a lot of interesting assessment that is sort of encourage people to be able to use it and to talk about this. So for example, stage three, a student were asked to do a TED talk in Chinese. And wow. then, <laughs> and then last semester, I asked my stage two student to do uh, instructional videos to say how to make, uh, to how to bake a cookies or something mm. um, in Chinese. Or um, so we like to uh, to students to do a lot of project, a lot of tasks that you can utilize the um, language skills. Um, but that being said, we are also quite strict in terms of grammar and um, reading and writing. So often in um, school, there's more focus on speaking and listening. But for us, we have this responsibility to bridge you to an upper level. So it's quite important to really have a very solid background in your grammar and your reading and writing skill. So there, there is... Um, we have a reputation of being <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
kind of demanding subject. <laughs> but I think it's really it's it's we we are passionate about what we're doing, so we want students to really success, and we really want them to become a very professional user of the language. And so that's why. Mm. Yeah. So it's a kind of a tough love approach, but. <laughs> But it sounds but like it's, it's not, working. Yeah, it is working. Like when we look at our um, alumni and how successful they are, and it's just like it's it's worth it. I know it's hard, but yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But if you have students who are then going on to do a master's program in China, clearly they are developing that high level of language ability that they need to do that. So it's yeah. worth it, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, we have yeah. questions here now. We can answer. Um, oh, cool. So a couple of questions about students who have studied Chinese at high school. Mm -hmm. um, so I've got one question saying who's eligible to be in Chinese. Another one, I think, along the same vein, um, which Chinese language course would you recommend for those who have learned Chinese in their secondary school? And then another one. Uh, along the same vein again, if students have learned Chinese at high school and pass HSK level three or four, mm -hmm. which level of papers will they take to go to university? Mm, yeah. So, um, yeah, so in terms of placement, so mm -hmm. uh, I can't give, give you a definite answer, say if you did three years, you're definitely in certain course. So, mm -hmm. uh, but what you could do is that we have um, if you browse into the Chinese subject, the courses, I think there's a website that tells you what we expect the student to know. So basically, if you go to the course website, it tells you what students are expect to know certain amount of words. They're expected to know certain grammar already for people mm -hmm. who enter this. So you can sort of do a self-diagnostic uh, by looking at the um, looking at the description, and then what happened is that we, when you apply for the course, you submit a concession request because the prerequisites are needed in the system. So you need to, if you want to get placed to a more advanced level, you need to submit a concession request. And what we do is we will send you a link to an online placement test and where we get more details from you. So for example, how many years, and sometimes students have background, for example, they live in China for a year when mm -hmm. it was five or something. <laughs> like we want to know these details so we can get a better idea because students really come with a different background. Some people have really good speaking and listening, but doesn't know any characters. Mm -hmm. um, some people can read and write really well, but doesn't speak a thing. So. <laughs> So we really have to look at this in the case by case uh, basis. Mm -hmm. so, um, so basically you complete the online uh, Canvas test and then we put you in um, the level that we, we think would be the most suitable. Um, so I think it doesn't really necessarily mean if someone say study for three years, get placed in stage one or get placed in stage two, it doesn't necessarily mean people get placed lower is just not as good. It just whether their knowledge, how their knowledge fit in our curriculum. So maybe they know a lot of different words, but because we expect people in a higher level know another set of words. So mm -hmm. we don't want to set someone else for failure. And that, that's the reason why we want to sometimes put students who have studied many years in the lower level. Right. Um, yeah, so it, it really depends. Yeah, so I, so a, a placement has, is the answer, yeah. Okay. So just make sure you contact early. <laughs> right. And I think you mentioned it earlier, but um, just in case anybody missed it, if students haven't studied Chinese at all, there are also beginners. Yeah, they're also them. very welcome. Yeah, so they can just um, sign up themselves in the first course. Yeah. Yes. Um, and we've got one more question open here. Um, with Cert Lang, the students from different degrees could take this without extra workload. What do you mean extra workload? Um, so that's in the question and answer box. If you want to oh, pop that okay. open. I think I would just. Oh, there is a. I there we go. Oh, there's a question answer. <laughs> yeah. 
uh, from different degree could take this without extra workload. Like, could they take it with their elective spot? No, no, no. no. So third land is an extra, is an additional degree. So what uh, you could for some degree, so for example, if you're doing commerce, I think they might have two, it depends on your major. And sometimes you talk to the advisor and they say you can have two space for elective and they will let you do the language. Mm -hmm. But certain degree like engineer, I know they're quite strict. They're like, you can't go out and take other paper. Right. In that case, certificate will allow you to legitimately uh, take this paper. <laughs> so your, your, um, your faculty wouldn't complain. <laughs> yeah. Right. But then it, yeah, it would take a little bit of extra time. But then time that would be extra time. The yeah. Program. yeah. Okay. Um, I think that's all for questions and we're just at four o'clock. So maybe we should wrap up. I will let anybody who's watching this know if they want more information on the programs, um, the University of Auckland website, Department of Languages, no, languages, culture, linguistics, or mm, a school, a school of language. Oh, culture. oh sorry. <laughs> no, no worries. You no, you just part. just search Chinese and you will find us and <laughs> yeah. all the information. And you can find the. Uh, I think there's also the contact details of uh, undergrad advisor, or if you go to our courses, you can um, find the contact info of the uh, course coordinators. Yeah, and we're happy to answer your questions. Okay. Well, thanks again so much, Karen. Oh, you're um, so welcome. And thanks everybody for joining us today. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>